Hello everyone. Today, in this video, we are going to see how to calculate the chi-square goodness of fit. So uh, we'll uh, quickly move on to the video. If you have not subscribed uh, to my channel, kindly do it. In this video, we are going to study about the chi-square goodness of fit, how to calculate this. So first of all, you should understand what is a chi-square test. It's a very, in simpler term, we are going to learn here not the complicated one here. See, it is a hypothesis testing method. So we can have this chi-square test as the hypothesis testing method. What we are going to do here, it is a single number. So we have to understand that it is a single number which tells you something, okay, what is that? So it is a single number that tells you how much difference exists between your observed frequencies. See, whatever we are observing, I'll call it as O, right? So observed frequencies. And we are going to calculate uh, expected frequencies here. See, suppose I am uh, just observing 25 marks. For example, I'm expecting 30 marks, okay? Just like that, you can have a smaller example here. See, observed frequencies and the expected frequencies. Okay, so it is just telling, is there any difference between these two? That's what we are going to study in this chi-square test. What are the types we are, uh, the, there are two major types only we are going to learn. The first one, I will call it as the chi-square goodness of fit. The second one, I will call it as chi-square test of independence. Okay, test of independence is different from uh, chi-square goodness of fit. Both, I am going to calculate chi-square value. Okay, it's den denoted by this symbol, chi, okay, chi, chi square, okay, so denoted by this symbol, chi square, okay, so now the chi square goodness of fit and chi square test of independence, what are the difference here? See the first one, uh, only one difference, major difference we are going to have it here, it is a single measurement variable, I am having only one variable here in chi square test of independence, we are going to have two measurement variables. Today, in, in this video, we are going to study only the chi-square goodness of fit. In the next video, we will study the chi-square test of independence, okay? So, for time being, you know, there are two major types. One is chi-square goodness of fit. Another one is chi-square test of independence. In chi-square goodness of fit, only single measurement variable is there. So, using the single measurement variable, we are going to calculate the chi-square value, okay? So, now here, Goodness of fit test, what is it actually? So we'll have some two or three uh, points here. It is used to test if sample data, see from a population I'm taking a sample data, fits a distribution from a certain population with a normal distribution, okay? So now my sample data, whether it fits in the population which follows some distribution, okay? There are three types of distributions we are going to study in our uh, next video here. So there are three types of distribution, whether the sample belongs to this distribution or not, we are going to find out using goodness of fit test. What else it will do? So it is a non-parametric test, we know already, used to find out how the observed value, see we're going to have an observed value of a given phenomena, whatever may be the phenomena, is significantly different from the expected value, we are going to find it out here. So now it determines how well the theoretical distribution, see whatever we are finding out that theoretical distribution, which is normal, binomial or poison distribution fits to the empirical distribution. We just wanted to uh, check whether it satisfies this or not, okay, right. So now how to set the hypothesis for this, okay? So according to the sum, generally we are going to uh, just have like this. There is no significance difference between the observed and expected value, okay? So now the alternative hypothesis will be there is a significance difference between the observed and expected value. According to the sum, you can slightly modify and have this hypothesis, okay? So we shall have an example to study this. Okay, so now what is the formula? Before that, we should understand what is the formula. We are going to use it for this chi-square uh, goodness of fit here. See, it is denoted by chi-square, okay? This is the test statistics, okay? Test statistic, okay? It is the test statistic we are going to calculate, which is calculated using the following formula. This formula is chi-square whole sigma O minus E. O is observed, E is expected, okay? So just check it out. Uh, this one, this bracket is very important. Okay, this is the formula we are going to use it where O is the observed value 
and e is the expected value okay so sometimes it will be having a plural here values okay more values if we have we'll call it as observed values and expected values now what will be the degrees of freedom here okay usually degrees of freedom will be uh, k minus 1 we usually have it okay now sometimes we will be using this degrees of freedom depends on the distribution of the sample see for example i am having a distribution binomial then the number of constraints will be 1 so therefore degrees of freedom is n minus 1 for poisson distribution if it is 2 and it is n minus 2 for normal distribution it is the number of constraint is 3 and n minus 3 generally you keep it in mind degrees of freedom is calculated by k minus 1 okay now this is the constraints we are going to have it here okay right so we'll we'll have an example so that we'll understand this is not so important this one okay now the example is here a researcher there is a researcher wants to determine if cancer okay now cancer was more likely to be diagnosed in patients who are in a low income category so there is a population see for example i'll show like this okay there is there is a population okay now low income people will be here moderate and high like this i'm going to split it okay see now i'm going to show it here now low income category based on socioeconomic stat okay socioeconomic status will be written as yes Yes, you have seen in statistic book SES. Okay, socioeconomic status. Okay, whether they are having a car, uh, they are working as a, a bigger company like that, and all. No, they will we will have the um, uh, differentiation here. This is called socioeconomic uh, um, status here. This is usually we will be having like this. Okay, now there is a population here. Okay, it is divided into four equal parts. See, for example, this is twenty five percent. Okay, this is twenty five percent. This is 25%. This is 25%. Okay. Right. Now, this one and two, three, four. What are these things we are going to see now? Okay. Now we'll split it into four equal parts. That is the socioeconomic status quartiles. We'll call this as quartiles. Okay. Divides into four equal parts. Okay. Now he selects the people in equal proportion for the study as below. See, he's going to select it like this. See how he's going to select it here? Highest SES is selected 165 patients. Then moderate SES is selected 283 patients. Lower SES is selected 622 patients. Very low, he has selected 980 patients here. Now, this is 25%. This is 25%. This is 25%. This is 25%. Okay. This is what we are going to calculate now. So, how to do this? Now, I, this is my sum here. So, I'm going to frame the hypothesis first okay now each SES quartiles have an equal percentage of cancer patients equal percentage of um, cancer patients are there in all four uh, category here that's what i'm going to take it so that i'll symbolically I show like this okay the frequency from first one frequency from second frequency from third frequency from fourth one are equal otherwise you can write it in words and leave it okay now what will what will be my alternative hypothesis each SES quartiles does not have an equal percentage of cancer patients okay now as usual i'm going to say select the alpha as 0 0.05 now how to go about this now these values this 165 283 622 980 okay these are all the values given 165 and 283 and 622 and 980 these values are called observed value okay now these values are given here already we have observed this is called the observed value now how to calculate the value which is expected so we are going to have a formula for that the formula is expected value e is calculated as total frequency divided by number of response choices which is in our case, it is nothing but 25%. We are going to calculate as 0.25. Okay, you have to keep it in mind. Whatever is the percentage given here, number of response choices is 25%. Now, total frequency, I'm going to total this. This one, this one, this one, this one, I'm going to total it. I'm going to find out the expected frequency. Most uh, probably all the values will be having a uh, same, okay, because everything is 25%. Okay, this is 25%, this is 25%, this is 25%, this is also 25%. So we'll be having an equal value here, okay? Right, so now 
Uh, this is 2050 is the total for this. So I'm going to divide it by number of response choices, 0.25, where from it is coming, it is 25% for everything. So I'm going to calculate. So if it is, this one is separately, it is done means separately where to calculate for each and everything, okay? So now I'm calculated once, only once because everything is equal. So only once I'm calculated. So expected value, expected value, expected value, expected value for all the four will be equal for us. Okay, so I'm going to table it this value here. This value is 512.5, 512.5 it is coming. So I'm going to table it the uh, value for O and value for E. Then I'm going to use the formula which says sigma O minus E, the whole square divided by N, the single, uh, I'm sorry, it's not N, it is E. Okay, so now this is a single value which is being calculated. Okay, so now we'll quickly move on to the calculation here. So how to do this? I have done an observed value. This value I calculated already. Then here, O minus E. Now 165 minus 512.5, which gives you the value minus 347.5. Similarly, 283 subtracted 512.5, which gives you 229.5. Then 622 minus uh, 512, which gives you 109.5, then 980 minus uh, 512, which gives you uh, 467.5. Now this is O minus E. Now I'm going to square this column, okay? Square the value, just multiply these two, right? Now 347.5 into 347.5, which gives you this much, 120756. You can use the calculator to find it out. Similarly, I'm going to square this value. So that's this. I'm going to square this value. I'm going to square this value. I'm going to write it. Once it is being done, what it says, O minus E, the whole square, this column, I'm going to divide with this E, okay? Now, this is column number one. This is now column number one, two here. This will be written as one divided by two column, right? So what I'm going to do here, this particular value, I'm going to divide it by the expected value. So I'm getting the answer as this much. Similarly, I'm going to divide this by this. I'm going to divide this by this, okay? So now I'm going to divide this by this value, okay? So now I'm going to total this. Now that is what is my uh, <clears throat> sigma O minus E the whole square divided by E, okay? So this is what I'm going to calculate. So it is enough if we calculate this and write it here, okay? So now I've calculated 788.24. This is only is my calculated value. So I will call it as chi square calc is equal to 788.24. I'm going to write it. Then as usual, I'm going to compare it with the tabular column value here that I'm going to show it in the next thing, okay? This is what is the calculated value. This is I'm going to just chi square is equal to 788.24, which has come in the previous slide. Now, chi square calculated value is 788.24. Now I'm going to calculate the degrees of freedom here. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. My k value is four. My degrees of freedom will be k minus one, that is equal to three, okay? so. I'm going to calculate the degrees of freedom here. My right? degrees of freedom is four minus one, three. So I'm going to find out the chi-square value from the chi-square table. So I have to go for chi-square table. You ask for it under 0 0.05. I'm going to find out the value, what the value comes here, okay? So I'm going to calculate. This is my calculated value. This is the critical value, which is coming from the tabular column for three degrees of freedom, I found out already 7.82. So I'm going to compare these two, okay? Now compare them, chi-square calculated value is greater than chi-square critical value here. Okay, now 788 is greater than 7.82. So I'm going to give a conclusion. The null hypothesis is rejected at 5% level of significance. Therefore, we conclude at 95% confidence that the cancer patients are not equally distributed across the SES categories, okay? It is different, okay? This is how we will calculate the chi-square goodness of fit. Thank you very much for uh, watching this video. If you have not subscribed to our channel, kindly do it. Thank you very much once again. Have a nice day.